Have you ever played a game where you spend it collecting every upgrade, maxing out your stats or abilities, fine tuning a build to be just perfect, only for the game to then just end right when you felt like you had the character you wanted? Welcome to 90% of Metroidvanias and action RPGs. Well, let me be the one to finally say it. More games need endgame content. The Metroid series is a prime example. You spend most of the game exploring and finding power-ups and upgrades, but almost every game ends one boss after collecting the final movement ability. So you are never really tested on Samus's full kit. Dark Souls 1 is another great example. It takes most of the game to get the gear you want and the level you want, but it just ends without testing you. You might be screaming that New Game Plus is the end game, but the only New Game Plus that is any effort put into it is Dark Souls 2, which has entire enemy placement swaps, new enemies, and changed boss fights. Dark Souls 1 New Game Plus is just a little bit of extra damage and HP, but you still 3-shot most early game bosses. The Zelda series is also like this, where you spend a lot of time visiting dungeons to get specific items, but the games never really give you an opportunity to put it all together. Endgame content is usually reserved for MMOs or JRPG games. Games that less rely on player skill and more just rely on stats and gear upgrades. But in the last decade, especially in the indie scene, we have really started seeing more games give you that endgame optional challenge that many players want. A great example of this is the incredible Hyper Light Drifter from Heart Machine. This stylish action adventure game has you exploring a haunted world and searching for answers. By the time you reach the end game and have collected every weapon and outfit, you might think it's over, but then there's an end game challenge arena that really tests the skills you've been working on mastering all game. And then after that, they have a boss rush mode with different levels of difficulty for you to work your way through. On top of that, the Switch version of the game has an extra optional end game dungeon to run through. Yes, please, more games need to give me a way to test what I have learned at the highest level. It's actually strange to me that games with an emphasis on action and skill-based movement or combat don't do this more. Look, not every game should try to be 20 plus hours. A shorter, simpler experience is great. I'm not really speaking to the devs of those types of games. I am more so talking to you devs that put in a ton of work on a crazy cool combat system or really fun movement, but then never really give enough to hold the player to your game. Let's take Ori and the Will of the Wisps, for example. It has a very fun, deep, and complex combat system, fluid platforming, and fun abilities to learn and upgrade. The problem is that by the time you finally have everything unlocked and are ready to start taking it to the next level, the game just ends, and there isn't anything to use all this tech on. I get it. Not everyone has a lot of time. Some people just want a tight experience and would rather just see the end of a game and move on to the next one. That is fine, there is nothing wrong with playing that way. End game challenges like I'm talking about should always be optional, just a way for your more hardcore fans to really dive into the mechanics you created. Now you are saying, well, time and money. We need to get this game done, so let's build the game that people are going to experience once, and then maybe if we have time... See that sentence right there. The difference between a, uh, hey that game was fun for a playthrough, and oh my gosh this is my favorite game ever, is hard to discern. And there are many factors involved. But the best reward a player can find in your game isn't an overpowered secret item or an easter egg. It's just more game. It's talking to a buddy and then coming to the realization that, oh my gosh, I missed an entire optional thing in this game I loved? I have to go back. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Cause yeah, Hollow Knight is a king in this discussion. I have seen so many people, and even devs, say Hollow Knight is just an unfair comparison to other games. And I actually kind of struggle to see why. They didn't have an unlimited budget. They didn't have a huge, extremely experienced team. They didn't have a cheat code to just build the game for them. Instead, they just said, hey, what if we made a ton of optional stuff for the player to stumble onto? We have this character that is a really fun moveset and feels great to play with. Why don't we just give players something to use this character in? So we got an entirely optional combat area, an intense platforming section, and upgraded elite boss rematches for endgame fights. Keep in mind, this is all pre-DLC. Because then we got God Home, which is just an awesome way to be able to refight any boss and give players optional ways they can opt into higher challenges for themselves. You have to admire the confidence they have in their own boss design to reward players for not taking any damage. Many of you might want to bring up the Castlevania boss rush modes, but Castlevania games barely have any challenge, except Order of Ecclesia, and those boss rush modes are less here to test your skills, and they're more here. How fast can you spam attack and run from left to right? That's not really the thing that I am searching for here. And it's not just Metroidvanias or action games, endgame content can be for other genres as well. 
Celeste is a great example of a pixel platformer that has a satisfying main storyline and ending, but for those that really want to test themselves, there's the farewell expansions, as well as each level having an optional B and C side that really let you go crazy. This is another example of a game that goes the distance. It knows when to give lesser invested players an off ramp, but then just goes so above and beyond for the people that truly love the game. If we are talking AAA games, then my pick for best endgame content is Doom Eternal, which has master levels, and these are redesigns of the base game levels, but with a fully upgraded endgame Doom Slayer kit in mind. Its DLC is then the perfect endgame test, and they even added a horde mode of sorts. I have seen people marvel at how dedicated certain fan bases are, like Hollow Knight, Celeste, Doom Eternal, Terraria, apparently Monster Hunter is all about this. Here is the thing, you give your dedicated fans stuff to become really good at, and really test themselves, and you keep them invested way longer. Which means hype for your next game is going to be insane, because the fans are constantly invested in everything you do, and know that you have their interests in mind. I don't want this video to come across as me saying games are too short, or are bad without this. If every game started adding 15 to 20 hours of optional endgame content, I think that would get old pretty fast. I just think having endgame type content does help set your game apart, and if you have a really fun character with crazy tech and abilities, and a high skill ceiling, why wouldn't you give players the means to push that skill ceiling to the limit? That about wraps it up for this topic, but along similar lines, I want to feature an upcoming indie game that might have just what I was talking about. Take a look at Nara Facing Fire. This game is inspired by Hollow Knight, Celeste, and Ori. It's being developed by a family studio and is just so clean. The art style is hand drawn, the movement looks great, the combat is just what I want, it has a pogo. They aim for a huge amount of content and I'm sure getting funded and hitting stretch goals would add to that. You can already wishlist on Steam and they will be heading to Kickstarter soon, so keep your eyes open. Be sure I will be covering this more in detail as we get closer to that, so subscribe for more content like this, as well as horror, oblivion, silk song lore theories.